Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 failed video game copycats. For this list, we'll be looking at various video games that blatantly ripped off more successful ones. Have you ever actually enjoyed an obvious copycat? Let us know in the comments section below. Number 20. The 3D Battles of World Runner. In 1985, Sega released a killer arcade title called Space Harrier. It was widely touted within the industry for its incredible graphics and fun jet propulsion based gameplay, and it was subsequently ported over to dozens of home consoles. By all accounts, it was a monumental success, and in came the 3D Battles of World Runner to leech off it. This one came from Square and was released for the NES. The game was a technical marvel, being one of the first to utilize stereoscopic 3D and forward-based scrolling effect that allowed players to move in any direction. Technical marvel aside, it was an obvious rip-off of Sega's game and its innovative technology. Number 19. Pac-Man Party Someone should have told Namco Bandai that they were about 10 years too late to get aboard the party bus. In 1999, Hudson Soft and Nintendo released the brilliant Mario Party. The multiplayer gameplay was highly praised, and it became the go-to sleepover game. The series is still going strong today, with Super Mario Party being released in 2018. In 2010, Namco Bandai ripped the formula right off for Pac-Man Party. They weren't even inventive enough to give it its own title. Making it worse is Namco Bandai's obvious inferiority to Nintendo, resulting in an inferior game no matter which way you slice it. Number 18. Quantum Theory In 2006, Cliff Blazinski and Epic Games gave us Gears of War, which proved to be one of the next-gen Halo killers. It proudly sat alongside Halo and Call of Duty as the go-to multiplayer games of the generation, with particular attention going to its graphics and cover-based shooting mechanics. Nearly five years later, Team Tachyon released Quantum Theory. Watch yourself! Don't get hit by any debris! Just a single glance at its artwork is enough to give away its obvious inspiration. Like Gears, the characters are muscular and wear large, bulky pieces of armor. The guns and camera angles are virtually identical, as is the game's cover-based shooting mechanics. They're so similar, we're surprised Epic didn't slap them with a lawsuit. Number 17. The Legend of Zelda Lonk's Awakening This is probably not the ripoff you're expecting. Flappy Bird was one of the world's biggest mobile games in January of 2014, becoming the most downloaded free app on the App Store. However, the Flappy Bird wasn't long for this world, and he was put down by his creator on February 10th, 2014. Naturally, a ton of clones and ripoffs sprouted up in its wake to fill the gap and satiate the addictions of players everywhere. The Legend of Zelda Lonk's Awakening was one of these games, and it was essentially just Flappy Bird with a Zelda-themed coat of paint. Number 16, Boxmaker. This game is just a mess on all accounts. Nintendo released Super Mario Maker in 2015, an interesting side-scroller that let players create their own Mario courses. A couple years later, we got the glorious Box Maker. Box 
Boxmaker all but admits that it ripped off Super Mario Maker in its grammatical abomination of a Steam description. It's not just the concept that the developers ripped off, the music, the sound effects, the color scheme, the gameplay mechanics, everything is ripped straight from Mario. Number 15, Legend of Crouching Dragon. Blizzard isn't one to take things lying down. Not long after Hearthstone was released in closed beta, a Chinese developer swooped in and ripped off the concept. Even the logo was strikingly similar. Legends of Crouching Dragon, Generals of the Three Kingdoms was released the following fall season on mobile devices, and Blizzard was not happy. They launched a copyright violation lawsuit, resulting in Legend of Crouching Dragon being taken off the App Store and its servers being temporarily suspended. In 2014, Blizzard won the lawsuit, and developer Unico Interactive was reportedly asked to hand over $1.6 million in compensation. Number 14, Kung Fu Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends. Fighting games are tricky to pull off, as titles like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, and Super Smash Bros. pretty much nailed the formula. It seems hard to make an original fighting game these days, and as such, new ones are often compared to the classics. But Kung Fu Panda is essentially a one-to-one -one remake of Super Smash Bros. The gameplay and look are identical, complete with increasing percentage points as a damage counter, a drop-in from above after elimination, crowd noises, orchestral music, and even that colorful explosion graphic that accompanies a knockout. If Poe was in Super Smash, you literally couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> Number 13, Final Combat. And here we have another blatant Chinese ripoff. Like Kung Fu Panda, Final Combat is a one-to-one -one ripoff of Team Fortress 2, only without the quality. The character classes are exactly the same, although they lack the charm and sense of humor of the original cast. The game also copies numerous elements from Team Fortress, including gameplay mechanics and the colorful cartoony art style. It could make for a decent, albeit blatant, ripoff if it weren't for the horrible controls, persistent bugs, and rampant frame rate issues. It's just a bad game all around. Number 12, Disney Infinity Series. The Toys to Life genre exploded when the Skylanders franchise released in 2011. While some games like LEGO Dimensions have managed to set themselves apart, Disney Infinity practically replicated the formula. Level up your favorite Disney character, buy power discs for more weapons and improved stats, and beat up the bad guys. You could even design your own levels and feature which would evolve in 2.0 and 3.0. The sparks a character earns will help them level up. Each time you go up a level, you'll earn another spin in the Toy Vault. However, there just wasn't enough content, and buying a new version every year quickly became expensive. By the time the series had reached its true potential, players had left. Eventually, Disney called it quits and promptly shut down developer Avalanche Software and its publishing division. Number 11, Another Bound Neo. The GameCube didn't have much, but it did have Metroid Prime, aka perhaps the greatest first-person shooter of all time. Metroid Prime influenced untold amounts of developers in video games, and it's certainly not rare to see elements of it in various other first-person shooter and adventure games. But Another Bound Neo is a straight ripoff. It looks exactly the same, and the screen layout alone could fool anyone not deeply familiar with Metroid Prime. Put screenshots next to each other, and another bound Neo might just pass the taste test, or sight test in this case. Number 12, 
Number 10, the Great Gianna Sisters. Copycat games have been an issue long before mobile gaming was plagued with them. As the oldest entry on this list, the Great Gianna Sisters was a shameless clone of Super Mario Brothers. Just look at this! It's as if the art style was directly lifted from Super Mario Bros., and the developers made tiny tweaks to look slightly different. While it's believed that Nintendo filed a lawsuit against the developers, the rumor has since been proven false. However, Nintendo did take part in swaying sales away from Gianna Sisters. Number 9. Unearthed Trail of Ibn Battuta It's hard to imagine anyone trying to replicate the look and feel of the Uncharted series. Considering the game's size and scope, it'd be hard to pull off. And yet, someone still tried to copy it. What resulted was Unearthed Trail of Ibn Battuta, a game that tried so hard to look exactly like Uncharted, the main character looks like he could be Nathan Drake's cousin. He's armed by an arms dealer and funded by a wealthy antiquity smuggler. And I suppose they're all after a share of that dark, cursed, and valuable thing. The most notable flaw here is the incredibly awkward animations. Everyone looks stiff as a board. The reviews on Metacritic aren't lying. No, 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 no! Watch out! Number 8, The Simpsons Skateboarding. 50-50 grind. The Simpsons have had some pretty good copycat games over the years, with a few games successfully setting themselves apart from the games that inspired them. However, not every title was a real shiner. <laughs> Enter The Simpsons Skateboarding, a Tony Hawk's Pro Skater clone that forgot to include everything that made the games fun. Why can't I pull off this trick? Why am I not able to grind on that railing? Why is it so frustrating to control? The game was buggy, the physics were broken, and it failed to replicate the fluidity Pro Skater was known for. Hey, dude, clever move. All right! Number 7, Sonic Shuffle. Mario Party has been known for its simple yet replayable gameplay. You hit a dice block, navigate your way to a star, and play a bunch of mini-games. Few have tried to replicate this formula, and very few have succeeded. Sonic Shuffle did not succeed. The game was essentially Mario Party with a Sonic skin, but its gameplay was too confusing. You draw a random card from your hands to move, but you can also steal an opponent's card? What? And oh, the load times. You spend more time waiting on the game to load than playing it. This game was just another case of Sonic trying to be like Mario. Yes! Number 6, Fur Fun, aka QP Jazzy. <laughs> These days, it's not rare to see a game billed as a spiritual successor end up being a poor imitation. Fur Fun was a Steam game that desperately tried jumping on the ukulele hype train in early 2017. Like other abusive Steam developers, Fur Fun was littered with stolen assets, using gold ingots from Minecraft and ripping music straight out of Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> oh, and did we mention a YouTuber published this? Yep. Dallas Review not only published the game, but he also provided some of the worst narration we've ever heard. On top of that, he went out of his way to file DMCA takedowns and hide any negative criticism. For shame. <laughs> Number 5. Castle Miner. Mojang Studios' Minecraft is the game of our generation, and with over 200 million copies sold, it is the highest-selling video game of all time. There are bound to be a few rip-offs. Perhaps the worst of all was Digital DNA's Castle Miner.
This too is a block-building sandbox game centered around mining for materials and building structures. It was just one of many Minecraft ripoffs released through Xbox Live Indie Games, and while it was arguably the worst, it was also the most successful, selling over 1 million units. It just goes to show that sometimes shamelessly ripping off something else does pay off. Number 4. Mole Cart Once again, we have a shameless Chinese knockoff in the form of Mole Cart. Released for iOS in 2012, Mole Cart is exactly what it sounds like. Comparisons to Mario Kart were obvious and instantly made by critics and fans alike, with nearly every review in the App Store mentioning its obvious inspiration by name. In fact, entire courses were ported over, including Moo Moo Meadows and Mushroom Gorge, and the items, blocks, and sound effects were nearly identical. It didn't take long for Nintendo to take notice, and the game was quickly taken off the App Store. However, it was later re-released under the title Mole Cart 1, and a sequel was released the following September. Number 3. Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion There are so many games trying to copy the success of Super Smash Bros. What most of them fail to realize is that you need a strong character roster, good level design, and a balanced game. Punch Time Explosion had a pretty decent character roster, like Dexter, Billy and Mandy, Nigel Uno, Samurai Jack, and the Powerpuff Girls. However, most of these characters were too overpowered, and most of them played too much like their Smash Brothers counterparts. The game even had its own version of Subspace Emissary from Brawl. Punch Time Explosion had the potential to be a great Cartoon Network branded game, but it turned out to be yet another Smash Brothers clone. Number 2, Infinite Crisis. MOBAs are all the rage these days, but the market has become so saturated that there's almost no room for a new game. Unfortunately, Warner Brothers Interactive and developer Turbine realized this a little too late. Infinite Crisis has you playing as your favorite DC character trying to destroy the enemy team's base. The Caped Crusader is a powerful energy-based bruiser with a strong harass and the ability to quickly get up close and personal with enemy champions. It was a decent game, but the problem is that we already have League of Legends, Dota 2, and Smite. With all three having established communities, you'd have a hard time trying to get players to switch over. The game soon found itself in a crisis of its own, and servers were shut down less than five months after release. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos, or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The War Z, aka Infestation Survivor Stories. If you want to understand the definition of shameless, this game perfectly encapsulates the meaning. The War Z was one of the many games that tried riding the coattails of Daisy during the peak of its success. In fact, War Z went so far to replicate the game that it looked like an exact copy. Problems quickly escalated when the developers were caught lying about features within their game, and they would incorporate microtransactions later down the road. Add in homophobic slurs from the executive producer and censoring criticism, and War Z would go down as one of the worst games ever made. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.